I waited about an hour, and I'm like, you know, uh, no one's ever going to hire me if I keep doing shit like that, so I deleted him. Are you, who are you looking to, like, hire you in that case? I mean, in the long run, I'd like to be, you know, I'd like to be a host. So, you know, whether it's DreamHack or WCS or BlizzCon or something like that, I'd like to, to host some event. Personally, I think you would be an awesome host. Like, I think of, like, In Control. He's not always, like, the, um, I don't know, like, you know, that everyone likes him. He's more controversial as well. But that's who you have always reminded me of, I guess. I guess I, I haven't had a chance to uh, to be a part of controversy yet. But, mm-hmm. I mean, there, there are times where I, I bite my tongue a lot. I'm, I'm new to this scene. <laughs> so I'm not saying that I'm not, you know... I don't come close to saying those things that are going to make people go, uh, you wanted to say that. But, yeah, I guess, I guess if I, I could definitely relate to anyone that's in the caster uh, commentator scene, uh, I definitely see myself aligning with Jeff a lot. I align with Destiny a lot, too. And I, I think so, if that's, a, if that's telling at all, it's that a lot of times I'm like, I agree with you, all right. So that's why usually when he goes on his rants on the show or you know, when I watch him on Chamin, I'm like, yeah, I agree. But, right. yeah. So, I can't really say yeah, I am controversial, but, you know, the, what people do think is controversial, I do agree with a lot sometimes. Well, uh, let's talk about, about your shows. So, you've got The Late Game and Scrubs. Mm-hmm. So, for people who haven't really watched them or, or are familiar but don't really uh, know what they're trying to do, tell me a little bit about them. So, The Late Game is trying to be a trying to fill the gap that State of the Game left. I like to think that we're kind of bringing a different show than what State of the Game was. Mm-hmm. And as it's evolved, what it, what it wanted to be was like Sports Center. Like you're tuning into Sports Center for StarCraft. You know, you're going to see some replays. You're going to see uh, people talking about the game, talking about strategy and things like that. And we're still trying to find our feet. Uh, the production, it's really easy to hit play. It's really easy to get people on a Skype call to sit there and talk. It's you know, coordinate everything beforehand that takes a lot more time than you realize. So we're still growing. But right now we've been doing some pretty pretty cool stuff. Um, We, uh, QXC has been making regular appearances and he has actually talked to me offline. He really enjoys coming on and what we do is we go through replays. That's how we've been starting off the show. We choose a game from the week past and we go through those replays. And then last week, uh, you know, I, I had this really cool idea to start having them jump into the replay. So we'd get to a point, and they're discussing something like, we were talking about roaches, like, well, how could he have held off that roach timing if he had scouted it there? So then uh, Destiny and QXC jumped into it, and they actually acted it out. Like, okay, so he didn't do this. Well, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull my ICVs. I'm going to build an extra bunker when I scout it all the way there. And it gives that new dynamic of, you know, not just discussing what could happen, but actually putting it into action. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, maybe no, that wouldn't have worked, or yes, it did work. Um, so overall, you know, the show is a StarCraft two strategy show. Uh, we've had enough, a couple episodes where we talk about the community and the drama and all that, but I really don't want to make that the paradigm of, right. of the late game. I want the late game to be about the game mm-hmm. itself. So that's what the late game is. Okay. And uh, about Scrubs, what are you trying to accomplish with that as well? Scrubs is... Uh, you know, I, I later found out that Mr. Bitter had actually done this uh, before I got into the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had done a show where he had brought people on to do coaching, and he did it. Uh, I don't know if he did a live, but he made videos of it. Um, but I came up with the idea of Scrubs just thinking, you know, I'd like to have people get a chance to interact with the pro. So I want to learn more about esports myself, but why not bring that into the community? So people tune in, they watch me uh, get coached by an individual in a certain game, and they get to learn from it. They get to actually interact with them and ask questions. Cause I know that myself, you know, if I had a, a bomber who was doing a show like that, you know, and I had the chance to ask, that would make me excited. So, uh, and it's not just Starcraft. It's all esports. We've actually haven't done Starcraft yet. I've got a lot of help <laughs> for that, but, um, we had, a uh, Eggy do Hearthstone and he's actually getting into heroes of the storm now. I know he's one of the top, uh, heroes of the storm actually like streams. He's one of those crazy dudes who has that gamer, just that gamer instinct that he picks up a game and he becomes good at it. Mm -hmm. So he's already playing the top people, uh, his MMR or whatever it is that they're using. He's is really high. So, 
Uh, we had Eggy, though, for Hearthstone, and then we had Swindle Melons, the complexity team captain for Dota 2. And that was a really good episode. That just, it went smooth. He was very intelligent. He taught me a lot. And uh, and that's what we're going for. It's, it's, I am new enough to all these games that it gives a lot of good new content, like new individual to an eSport. So it's going to help overall uh, give people that introduction because I'm saving this stuff to YouTube and all that. So it gives that backlog so that once, you know, I'm Dota, you know, super top player. I don't even know what they measured people in Dota with. <laughs> but once I'm there, they can go back to that Swindle Melons episode where Swindle was explaining the very basics of Dota that I had no idea about. Like, he was talking about last hit mechanics. He was talking about how a match actually goes, you know, what the theory of Dota is. And so that's what it is. It's to create a library of coaching, but at the same time to give you that weekly content to look forward to and to give you that interaction with your paper pros. I like it because it's... It's so cool to see like pros from different games and teaching that is applicable to to so many people who haven't played any of those games before. Can you tell us maybe like games that you are anticipating for future episodes? I'm looking forward to uh, League of Legends because I've mm-hmm. played League, but I've never been taught League. And so now that I've been taught Dota and I feel like I have a good understanding of it, I want to see how League shapes up in comparison to Dota. So I guess if you're going to compare two games, many people compare Dota and League. They're kind of that same MOBA-style game. Sure. Um, Warcraft 3. So I'm not just going to new esports. I'm going to Warcraft 3, and I'm really looking forward to... That's awesome. I Thank you. I, I, I have, <laughs> I've never played it competitively. I only played the campaign. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll check it out. And I've been playing it, and I don't know what I'm doing, but I try to spend a lot of time playing, a, making an army. And apparently you're not supposed to do that. So <laughs> I uh, I want to find out more about that. So Can I ask you from like our viewer pers- perspective who you are like talking to? Do you know yet um, who you might have for that? I, I've I've pitched it to Rotterdam um, okay. to come on for that. I think Roddy is who I want to have. Yeah. Come on. I also want to have Todd on. And actually Rifkin mm-hmm. and I, we talked about on one of the episodes of the late game that uh, Rifkin and uh, Roddy were on, is having them come on and... Todd coach Rifkin, Roddy coach me, and then we have a show match. Oh my god! So uh, I, Rifkin's gonna destroy me because I know absolutely nothing about the game. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'd say that, you know, we can look forward to Warcraft Three, okay. um, League of Legends, uh, call Counter Strike Go. I really want to mm-hmm. have Counter Strike Go. I'd I'd li- like to have Summit One G on, and I'd like to have uh, Clayster for Call of Duty, and especially with the new Call of Duty out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to get some content out for that. So the, those are the, probably the four top four games. And, of course, StarCraft. You know, we are going to have a StarCraft. The thing is, is that I think there's enough coaches, and what I'd like to do is to not get just the top-tier players, but to also get, you know, the people that are just solid players that can teach you, you know. Uh, Brent from StarCraft can teach, you know, everyone up to Masters how to be a kick-ass StarCraft player, or Terran player at least. And so I don't want to just pigeonhole it to that. So with StarCraft, there are so many of those people we could have. Highlights for the year, whether it's tournaments you went to or um, episodes of Late Game or Scrubs, let's hear them. All right, so for the Late Game, um, it has definitely been, episode one was great because I had Jeff, Todd, and Destiny and myself come on. And that was a really, uh, it was awesome because they both came, uh, Jeff I had pre-scheduled, Todd came on last minute, I just was like, hey, would you like to be on? And he said, yeah. And I was like, all right, that's awesome. So it was a really good opening episode. They were very strong people to make it the show, you know, to highlight what the potential of that show can be in the future, you know, as we get our feet and our bearings. Um, uh, Red Bull Battlegrounds, all year. I went to every single one, and it was an incredible... Wait, all of them? Yeah, yeah. I was was in Atlanta, Detroit, (laughs) and uh, and, uh, D.C. I didn't go to actually the in-studio events, but I was at all the live events. And you played on main stage at Detroit, right? I did. Yes. I got slow baneling dropped by, uh, <laughs> by Suppy. By I freaked out when I saw you on stage. I was like, that's my friend. That's my friend. I was so excited. Uh, it was, it was awesome. And you know, beforehand, um, <laughs> beforehand we talked about it. I was like, look, you're going to destroy me. I'm gold freak. You know, I don't, I don't think there's any question about this. So with that, uh, let's have some fun. And he did. And he did. And what I wanted to do actually was when he was slow, I realized he was slow dropping me. Mm-hmm. I wanted to kind of just get up from my chair and go walk around the uh, the side of the booth just to look at him and be like, 
really? Is that what you're going to do to me? But I, I thought, you know, I don't know. I didn't know if the admins would take that well or whatever, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was nice to be up on stage, and I go back and, and I watched, you know, myself up there, and uh, I I definitely think it was, it was definitely one of the most exciting times I've had in esports, so that was a huge highlight. Were you were you really nervous, or were you just like, oh, Suppy's gonna win. Let's just have some fun. Like, uh, I'm not nervous at all. No, no, absolutely, I was nervous because even though I knew that I wasn't gonna win, um, I still didn't play to the best of my ability, and that sounds ridiculous by by the standards of a gold league player. But I really was not on my, on top of my game, and the best way I can describe it is it was like playing with a brand new keyboard. You know, you get uh, that new keyboard that that you haven't played with before it's maybe it's angled a little different maybe the keys you know punch a little different that it was what it was feeling like so i'm like slipping on my macro and i'm slipping on you know my controls i'm hitting the wrong buttons and all that and all of that just kind of jumbles into this death ball of of, <laughs> of screwing up so then next thing you know you're getting a slow bandling dropped and you don't have enough marines to kill it you're like oh what am i doing oh i'm floating a thousand minerals so it, it kind of all that plays into it the yeah, the crowd wasn't it. And not even the, the headphones that are screaming at you. It sounds like a really pissed off ocean if you've ever worn them. It's just... And that's really? what's That's what's supposed to keep the noise out of the crowd. Hmm. So now I still heard the crowd go, oh, as <laughs> slow bane lanes came over. And then I'm like, something bad is about to happen. And, and you know. And then I'm like, I have no idea what. So I start, I, drop, I think I dropped like scans on them. I'm like, I don't see anything. And then I'm just like, oh, there's an overlord. What is he doing? Did he really <laughs> rally his overlords to my freaking base? No. And then... Oh, yeah. Psh, psh, yeah. So, I was... Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. You get a little nervous. Uh, it's, uh, I hear that a lot of pros don't, but obviously they've been on that stage a lot more, and they have a lot more skill than I do. So, even though I wasn't expecting to win, it was... I still wanted to play my best, and I think that that's where the nerves came from. I think maybe they still get nervous, but they're used to dealing with it or harnessing it to be able to, like, play effectively. You know, when you get adrenaline, you are able to play better and you're able to, like, make decision decisions faster. So maybe it's just they're able to harness it better. Yeah, that's probably true. I, I think that's a situation that once you've been in it enough times that, you know, you find the best way to work it to your, to your advantage. So maybe when I get my pro skills up there a little more with scrubs, then I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll understand. Maybe some Dota two uh, tournaments in your future. Uh, I absolutely. I, <laughs> I I think that I am on my way to being the best Zeus in North America. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Well, on your way to that, uh, <laughs> things you are looking forward to uh, in the next year of content. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting a late game set up that is 100. percent You know, every week. Every episode grows great. Um, and I'm not talking with yes, I mean with production. Like, I have this fancy little sideboard that kind of imitates the uh, the ESPN, the Sports Center, or whatever it is, uh, you know, thing that, like, has the little the highlighter that goes down. Mm-hmm. I haven't used that since episode one, or episode two. And instead, I've been typing in the uh, the status in the middle, so there's just those blank boxes. I want to have time to get those set up each week. So yeah. that's 2015. We're going to have that all is going to be great. Uh, I'm looking forward to Red Bull again. You know, they haven't announced it, but I hope they haven't lost their passion because I really wanted it. It's one of the best events I've been to. So uh, Red Bull, WCS, I am excited to see what comes of this. We're going to, you know, we can say all we want, but this is what we've wanted for a long time. Now that it happened, you know, let's suck it up and see what's going to happen. We're going to see a lot of great stuff come out of NA, and that's what I'm looking forward to. You know, so I don't look at it as charity. I look at it as uh, a great opportunity for the StarCraft scene. No, I think those are the things I'm looking forward to the most. Oh, I cannot wait for the way WCS is going to play out. It's going to be exciting. You're going to see those stories. You're going to see those, mm-hmm. you know, what, what was that guy, Dirty Gigi or something like that from the, uh, <laughs> at, I think it was Atlanta. Uh, you know, you're going you're to see people like that. You know, you're going to see those guys as, you know, um, American, Canadian, you know, South American dudes are going to come up and they're going to kick some butt and you're going to see faces we haven't seen before. You're going to see names that we've seen only on Reddit. Now, now you're there, you know, WCS Premier League, uh, North America, and you know, we can make all the jokes we want, but these guys are going to provide some great games for us. I, I think that, you know, there is a skill gap. It's no question about it whatsoever. And it's a lot, I think, in our mindset. We, that we're not, 
it's not a breed a breeding thing. You know, we haven't uh, bred poor gamers in the for <laughs> in the foreign scene all that while Korean is harnessing the uh, the good genes for proper macro and micro. I think it's just a mindset. And uh, I think, you know, what's going to be good is that we're no longer saying, oh, well, I'm never going to get through WCSNA because of my, I, I'm going to have to go through all these Koreans. Then it's going to be a matter of focusing on yourself and self-improvement. And there are pros and cons to having that stronger competition, but I think that there are pros to be seen. And that's, I'm definitely looking forward to that in 2015. Well, me too. I cannot wait for the next year of WCS as well. Um, before we go, any shout outs as well as where people can follow you, see your shows as well, anything like that? All right. <clears throat> First, shout out esportsmax.com and ggmaster.com. Um, before I left that organization, I was working for GG Master, and that's their guide website. They make uh, game guides, so please check them out. Uh, Dustin, Jeff, Greg, John. All of them at Esports Max were absolutely great, and I, I want to thank them for giving my first real career uh, in esports. Uh, shout out to Wisecracks. He is uh, he helped kick off uh, the late game. He gave a little bit of support, you know, financially to, to get some of the equipment, webcams, a little bit of software, and all that. And uh, he's sponsored show matches and and uh, been really great just in supporting the community in general. I know he's mm -hmm. he's helped out a lot of other streamers. Um, a big shout out to everyone who's checked out Gosu Pizza in the late game, who's uh, followed the work. And it's really appreciated, appre uh, appreciated. Obviously, I'd have nothing to do if it wasn't for you guys. Um, a big thanks to people like you, uh, Robbie. Um, let's see, Rifkin. You know, all those people that have uh, have been around that have already been in the scene before I got here and that have been supportive. It's really uh, it's good to have that network of, of friends and people to talk to. You know. And, uh, yeah, it definitely makes, that's why this is fun, you know, just getting to sit here and do this. Because <laughs> before this, we were over at a little meet and greet and, uh, and drinking wine and hanging out and having a good time. Um, I found pizza in a room. <laughs> and, uh, he did. and so, uh, you know, it's, that's, these are the kind of things that make it fun is these friends. It, it, and uh, it's a different friendship than, you know, just the, the guy you grew up with school with. You know, we're bound by a passion for StarCraft. And so definitely a huge shout out to you guys. And uh, I think that's really it. I'm not really good at selling myself. So yeah. you can follow me at like and GTV, um, like and GTV on Twitch. And, uh, you know, more go to pizza coming this month. Oh, and ascend to Star League. Uh, when I took the job with Esports Max, I completely ran out of time from my day job and that to run go to pizza. And ascend to Star League, well, if, if I was going to give it to anyone, it was absolutely them. They are, if you read their documents, um, like behind the scenes, it's like you're reading a, a BlizzCon, you know, professional, you know, this is the script, this is what we're going to go by kind of documents. They run a really tight ship. They do go to pizza for me now. I still sponsor. I still provide the pizzas and all that. I still show up when I can. Um, but they, they've taken the reins and they've done a really good job. So check it out. We're going to have our pro go to pizza and we're going to be extending it to Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone, Dota, yes. League of Legends, Counter-Strike. So... You may see me in that Heroes of the Storm one. God, I hope so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me. Well, awesome. Um, thank you so much for doing this interview. It was so awesome to do one with you because Jared and I often, like, will vent to each other or, like, talk, throw, throw ideas to each other, and it was really cool to be able to do an interview with you, finally, as well. I, I'm really glad. Uh, let's do a little bit of Craft Stars, right? So I've got these shoes. Yes, yes, please, show off these amazing shoes. Okay, so I had these made by a guy in Baltimore. doesn't really want to do them, like, as a regular thing, or I was going <laughs> to sell them on the Ghost of Pizza thing. But we got the Team Liquid logo right there, and then we got the, uh, the little bit of Terran. Got some tear over here. These are my Tasia themed <laughs> Protoss stompers, right? So, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Jared runs the Church of Tasia as well. So, you know, every week we, week ish, shoot, we worship the Church of Tasia and Flash. Down and pray. We bow down and pray for our Terran <laughs> lords to, uh, to bless our expansions and our mineral <laughs> lines and, and protect them from the Dark Templar. We have a lot of fun <laughs> with that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. I really enjoy it. Definitely. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. And stay tuned, guys. We'll, we will have more friend interviews soon. See you later.